I'll, I'll skip through over some of these early points, but I do want to share with you a story about prayer that I came across this week. Uh, it was a story of 11 girls that were sold into sex trafficking in Greece. And uh, one of the girls, well, all of the girls had been praying to Allah. They had been uh, captured and they had been in captivity for an entire year. And they were going from client's home to client's home. And they were getting ready to be sold. You know, and if you, I don't know much about it, but if you're sold into sex trafficking, you don't know where you're going to end up. These girls could be, you know, don't know where they could be. They were together at this time. And they had all prayed to Allah for him, which is of the Muslim faith. That's how they had been raised. They had all prayed to Allah for an entire year. And nothing had happened. Allah had not delivered. One of these girls was in a client's home. The person that shared this story did not say what she saw, but she saw something that reminded her of her grandmother. When she was a young girl, her grandmother told her about Jesus, and she referred to him as the Jesus who was the God of Europe. And this little girl said, I have prayed for a year to Allah, and nothing is happening, so I'm going to pray to Jesus. She began to pray for Jesus, to Jesus for a few days, and just within three days, three days, the authorities raided that client's home, and those girls were delivered. Amen. Now that is the power of praying to Jesus. Now I'm not I am pretty serious today. I don't have time to entertain you, so I'm going to give you some points. If you want to keep looking backward, you can do that the rest of your life. But if you want God to move in your family and to move in your life, He is ready to do it. And as Tom has preached to me this morning and Tyson told you, if you're not listening to the news, you better turn it on today. And I'm not talking Republican or Democrat. Get you on a station today. Get yourself caught up in some of this news that's going on with Israel. And you're going to be woken up. We're living in the end times. And that's not just something I'm just rambling on about. I'll let your preachers take care of that. But you, we better wake up. And I'm going to uh, just give you some scriptures and get right into the heart of the lesson. Psalm 77, 14. Thou art, and I'm just, I'm just getting a basis here for why she, we, we should pray to God. He is the God, it says in Psalm 77, 14. Thou art the God that does wonders. Do you believe it? Has yeah, yeah. he ever done a wonder for your family? Yeah. He can do it. Thou art declared thy strength among the people. Every miracle in our lives is preceded by prayer. 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. He may not answer like we want it to, but I know He hears our prayer. Don't stop praying. Jeremiah 29, 12 and 14. Then shall ye call upon me. You shall go and pray to me, and I will hear you. You shall seek me. You'll find me. Ye, when ye search for me with all of your heart, if you're not in your relationship with Jesus Christ today, you're just not happy in life. You can get happy when you seek Him with all of your heart. And I will be found if you say it, the Lord, and I will turn away from your captivity. I'm going to get all of this uh, just for a minute, and I'm going to give accolades to where they belong. But my son-in-law gave a wonderful testimony again Friday night about how God has delivered him. This morning, you know, we're all still living together. I heard his truck start up a little bit after 5 o'clock. And he and Brock left. And whether you like this or not, that's their business. But they went turkey hunting, I assume. And Tom said, we pulled out from church. And Tom said, those boys aren't home yet. I said, they'll be there. They'll be there. And he said, oh, Burnett, are you sure? I said, I'm sure of it, though. That's what I said. I'm sure of it. Because I heard my son-in-law's testimony Friday, and he is a changed boy. He's back. He's back doing what God has him to do. We get down to the store. Tom needed some gun because he's got this terrible cold or cough drops, whatever he went in for. Guess what? There was Bo's four-wheeler. There was Bo rocking there, changing their clothes. I'm telling you, if you want God to get you out of whatever state you're in, he will do it. He'll change your life. He'll change your desires. You
already. I hope I don't have any heart blockage, I don't know. <laughs> Probably just out of shape. But anyway, First Kings 18, 41 to 46 is when Elijah had prayed. He prayed for the Lord to hold off the rain. And then he prayed for the Lord to give him rain. For three and a half years, they hadn't had any rain. Elijah said unto King Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there's a sign of abundance of rain. What this means, spiritually speaking, there's a sign that God is going to answer your prayer. He's not going to answer a prayer that is not said. Right. And this is where we get, we just get so down, we just quit praying about it. You start praying again. Oh, so we had went up to eat and drink. Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. He cast himself down upon the earth, put his face down between his knees, said it to the servant, go up now. Look toward the sea. He went up and looked and said, there's nothing. He said, go again. He told him to do it seven times. Came to pass at the seventh time. The servant came back, and there appeared a little cloud the size of a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain, and Ahab rose, rose, went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. This is supernatural strength. He outran the chariot for 15 miles. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you pray to God and He comes on the scene, He's going to give you some supernatural strength. Yeah, right. Maybe not that kind. So first of all, Elijah heard the rain in his spirit. God had told him that. Pure faith. When God, I'm just telling you this morning, we all get desires of all the awful in our hearts. I've got a prayer, a personal prayer that I and I know God to put that on my heart. It's personal. I'm not going to share it. But I'm going to pray that God does something this week and I see something, even if it is just a cloud. <laughs>
The other thing is unforgiveness. Mark Pastor Debbie, honorary Pastor Debbie, I love many things about her. I've watched her not to find fault over the years. I've just watched her to learn from her. She was my mentor. And you're talking about a woman of God. She is. And I knew some of the things she struggled with. Or she's confessed to me and confided in me. But she also, God would not look, let her off the hook. And she's had to confess her unforgiving spirit. I've had to. And you're like, Renette, I've prayed about it, and I've prayed about it, and I still can't hardly forgive. You keep praying about it. Every day you confess that. When somebody hurts you, that's a hard pill to swallow. Somebody hurts your kids, that's a more difficult pill to swallow. Somebody hurts my man, that's a real hard one for me to show down on the limb.
You don't have to confess to us, but you need to pray about it to God. I would say if God had his way today, our altar would be lined. God put this on my heart. When I was studying for this, he said, this is the verse that they need to hear. You know, uh, I'm just going to stay here for a minute. You know, our Amy is like Trey. Or Trey is like our Amy. Now, yeah, I don't know how that happens. But if you guys were around when Amy was little, Melinda, it's the truth, isn't it? It's the truth. Now, I was shy. I was shy. And I couldn't hardly stand it. It got the best of me. We lived right up the road, and I barely, I hardly ever made it to a service. I took her home, which wasn't good. But I'm just confessing. Tom was up on the piano a lot, and I'd just be mad as a wet hen back there wrestling with her, and I'd try to get his attention. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just tell them like it is. We think we're all just like angels walking around. I'm saying I know that it's hard raising a family, and things get the best of you sometimes. But I tell you what you need to do today. You need to go home. Or maybe when you're sitting in the pew, maybe it's been a while since you've held hands. I don't know. I doubt that it has. Yeah. You guys have built a, that house together. You're still here, so you probably made it. <laughs> you need to love on each other so that the enemy can't separate you. If he can separate you too, right there is blocking your prayers. You're not going to see your family in if you and him are a mess. You've got to let God do the miracle in you and then the floodgates will open. Hallelujah! I feel good today. I feel good today. It's not the Tom of Renee show, but I've only got my story. I've only got my story. The enemy told me your girls will never serve the Lord. They'll never serve the Lord. Not that they were bad girls, but I just didn't see in them what I wanted to see. Boy, Friday night, you know, we're not the greatest singers, but you know what I loved? They do have good voices. My voice is about gone because of you people. You heard my voice. But boy, they know what they're singing about. And I know both of them well enough. And I know Bo too, they ain't going to get in no pulpit and sing unless their heart's right with God. Hallelujah! You're like, boy, Renee, you're so lucky. You're so blessed. You know what? We prayed a lot of prayers for our family. But the first thing you've got to do is make sure Tom and Burnett are all together on this thing. You know, I'm coming right down the line. It'd be an excellent morning for you to be out couples to get things right with you. I'm not going to shy away from this. The Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. I know Elijah watched for the sign of the rain. He told his servant to go again seven times, and I just kind of jotted down seven things that we might need to do again. We might need to go again to prayer, pray again, believe again, love again, hope again, forgive again, live again. Elijah sent his servant seven times. You know what is so important about this? Every time that Elijah sent that servant, he risked disappointment. I don't know if Elijah was disappointed all six times, but the servant was, I think. You risk disappointment every time you pray, and you don't see something right then. You've got to just keep praying again. In faith believing, you've got to keep praying again. Trust Him when you can't trace Him. Isn't that good? Yeah. Trust Him when you can't see a trace of evidence. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to trust Him. Yeah. Try, you know what would make your book of man mad? Is it? Now I'm not judging you. I'm not trying to tell you to put on an act. But instead of coming in here hear the services, and, and we will have those times, but instead of coming into the services, Dorothy, downhearted because you haven't seen any sign you come in like well wonder if it'll be today yes, wonder if it'll be today boy you change your attitude moment yeah.
California. It'll change us. A cloud the size of a man's hand is not big unless you've not seen a cloud for three and a half years. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> very bad, isn't it? Yep. I, I mean, I don't even notice a cloud right. the size of a man's hand. But if you've been waiting to see something for three and a half years, you noticed it, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. And then the skies got black and the rains came. God delivered. I don't know if I had anything out back, and I already gave you that. Elijah had supernatural strength after that. I'm telling you, nothing will give you strength more than seeing a miracle of God. Yes. And I would love to see some this week. Yeah. I would love to see God do miracles. And I am ready for it. Yeah. I tell you, I'm ready for it. Yeah. Let me just tell you, and I know we have a large crowd. Danny's church is a little, it's, it's smaller than ours. And, and I know that uh, you've got to have one or two of your service, and he did. But what I admired about those people is that they just continuously were coming for prayer. And they're, they're mostly new converts. I asked them the other night how many were saved less than five years, and almost a whole congregation yeah. stood up. <laughs> yeah. So he's got his, you know, his work cut out for him here. I'm telling you, Church ought to be a place where we love on each other and help each other over these hurdles. Instead of like saying we don't want that. You know we do. Tom told him the other night. I tell you what. He said, if you aren't wanted here, come to my church. I want you. I want anybody who is in need of Jesus Christ. I tell you, tell your friends and loved ones. Beach Ford wants you. We want you to come.
Grab somebody, get their attention, and have prayer in your pew. Pray before you leave here today. Can't you just feel that God is, I mean, God is wanting to do big things today. I am sweating. I mean, I am all sweat out. I am sweat out. God is in business today. Please be obedient. Please be obedient. I love you all. Listen